the Federal Reserve's battle against stubbornly high inflation has been an arduous one, fraught with tough choices and difficult trade-offs. But recent signals from the central bank's chairman, Jerome Powell, indicate that this grinding campaign may have turned a corner, ushering in a new era of relative calm in the financial markets and hope for a long-sought soft landing. In his much-anticipated speech last week at the annual economic symposium in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, Powell delivered what many investors and economists interpreted as his most definitive pivot yet, a shift from an almost single-minded focus on subduing inflation through aggressive interest rate hikes to a more nuanced approach balancing price stability with robust employment and economic growth. We will do everything we can to support a strong labor market, Powell declared, acknowledging that the Fed's policy rate is now at a sufficiently restrictive level to allow some breathing room as inflation pressures continue to abate. The chairman's words seemed to validate the nascent optimism that had begun taking hold in the preceding weeks across major asset classes. Scarcely a month ago, markets were whipsawed by an unexpectedly resilient jobs report, fueling fears that the Fed's inflation fight was far from over and presaging further aggressive policy tightening. Volatility gauges spiked as stocks tumbled and bonds sold off in a disorderly route reminiscent of the worst episodes of the pandemic crisis but that squall of turbulence now feels like a rapidly fading memory. In its wake has emerged a market landscape transformed, a return to an eerie calm that had eluded investors for over a year, with the S&P 500 index rallying to within striking distance of new all-time highs. The CBOE Volatility Index, VIX, Wall Street's fear gauge, has receded from panic territory, while treasury bonds and corporate credit have staged an impressive comeback. This newfound tranquility in the financial markets bodes well for Powell's high-stakes campaign to orchestrate a soft landing for the U.S. economy, achieving a Goldilocks scenario of stable prices without plunging the nation into a severe recession. Sima Shah, chief global strategist at Principal Asset Management, encapsulated the virtuous dynamic now seemingly at play, with the Fed shifting to a more dovish stance, focusing on stimulus rather than restraint. The risk asset rally has become a tailwind for Fed policy rather than a headwind. Working almost like an automatic stabilizer, markets should make the Fed's job that much easier now. At the core of this bullish sentiment is the notion that the Fed has already overcome the most formidable hurdle in its fight against inflation. The latest data shows headline consumer prices rising at an annual pace of just 3.2% as of July, a marked deceleration from the blistering 9.1% peak reached a year ago. Core inflation, which strips out volatile food and energy costs, has eased even further to just 4.7%. While still elevated, these numbers suggest that the Fed's aggressive policy tightening over the past 16 months has begun to take a firm grip. Emboldened by this progress, Powell felt confident enough at Jackson Hole to openly countenance the prospect of further interest rate cuts should economic conditions deteriorate meaningfully. The current level of our policy rate gives us ample room to respond to any risks we may face, including the risk of unwelcome further weakening in labor market conditions, he stated. These comments were widely interpreted as an implicit endorsement of the bond market's pricing of at least one additional rate cut before year-end. Steve Cayaverone, senior portfolio manager at Federated Hermes, reflected the prevailing view. I'm not in the business of praising Powell, but I thought he was quite wise in leaving optionality open. Should non-farm payrolls rise by less than 100,000 in August, then it better be 50 basis points of rate cuts. For an economy still bearing the scars of generationally high inflation, the mere prospect of a policy pivot from restrictive to accommodative is nothing short of manna from heaven. Across Wall Street trading floors, relief and euphoria have been palpable, a stark reversal from the angst and gloom that pervaded just weeks ago. Perhaps no asset class exemplifies this swing in sentiment more vividly than the bond market. Having borne the brunt of the Fed's inflation slaying campaign, with 2022 marking one of the worst years on record for fixed income, bonds have mounted a furious rally eerily reminiscent of the rebound that followed the depths of the pandemic crisis. Since their October peak, Treasury yields across most maturities have plunged by over 100 basis points, translating into substantial capital gains for investors. The yield on the 10-year note, the risk-free benchmark that underpins borrowing costs economy-wide, has retreated from north of 4.3% to the 3.8% zone, a dramatic move that has transmuted rapidly into lower mortgage rates and improved housing affordability for millions of aspiring homebuyers. Chris Zaccarelli, chief investment officer at Independent Advisor Alliance, articulated the far-reaching ripple effects.
The loosening of financial conditions should be supportive of corporations and consumers, who should be able to borrow money more cheaply and feel wealthier from higher stock prices. At the margin, it could support consumer spending and corporate profits and forestall future layoffs. The implications have reverberated across virtually every asset class. Corporate credit spreads, a barometer of corporate default risk, have compressed to levels last seen prior to the global financial crisis over a decade ago. Capital markets have experienced a resurgence of new bond issuance as companies take advantage of lower borrowing costs. Small cap stocks, often viewed as economic bellwethers, have surged over 6.5% in the past two weeks alone. Even the venerable 60-40 portfolio model, a benchmark for balanced multi-asset investing, has broken new ground, with a gauge compiled by Bloomberg hitting fresh all-time highs as stocks and bonds have risen in unison. After flirting with outright losses earlier this year, the 60-40 strategy has gained a stellar 12% so far in 2023, clawing back much of the ground lost in 2022's brutal bear market. While the drivers of this sudden market buoyancy are manifold, most roads lead back to Powell's dovish pivot and the resulting expectations of a looming pause and eventual reversal of the Fed's aggressive monetary policy tightening cycle. Metrics of overall financial conditions have loosened dramatically in recent months, a dynamic that many expect will provide a much-needed tailwind for the economy. Although the funds rate is still high, our overall financial conditions index is not particularly tight and has actually eased a fair bit over the last year, remarked David Merkel, chief U.S. economist at Goldman Sachs. The model we use to estimate the impact of changes in financial conditions on real economic activity implies that this easing in financial conditions is providing a modest, roughly one-quarter percentage point boost to GDP growth in 2024. Given the mounting risks of an outright recession, this projected lift could prove to be the critical difference between a soft landing and a harder economic downturn. And there are indications that investors are embracing this optimistic, immaculate disinflation narrative with increasing conviction. Probabilities derived from pricing in Fed funds futures contracts, for instance, now show markets assigning around a 60% chance that the Fed will slash its benchmark interest rate by at least half a percentage point before year-end. Mere weeks ago, that eventuality seemed politically impossible given Powell's rhetoric and the lingering inflation concerns. Among the broader analyst community, Forecasts for anemic to negative economic growth later this year have given way to more buoyant projections. The latest monthly Bloomberg survey of economists pegged the chances of a recession over the next 12 months at less than 50%, a marked improvement from dismal levels a year ago when the risks of an economic contraction seemed all but inevitable. Of course, irrational exuberance and unfounded optimism have been the undoing of many a market rally throughout history there remain ample warning signs that the path to a soft landing will be treacherous. The labor market, resilient though it may be, is showing nascent signs of erosion. While the unemployment rate remains near historic lows, payroll growth has decelerated meaningfully from its blistering pace in 2022. Revisions to prior month's data show that job creation over the past year was even more anemic than previously estimated. Wage growth, while slowing, remains stubbornly high, a potential impediment to inflation returning to the Fed's 2% target in a timely manner. Cracks are also emerging in other corners of the economy that have thus far held up remarkably well against the headwinds of aggressive monetary tightening. The housing sector, a crucial linchpin of the business cycle, has stagnated under the weight of higher mortgage rates. Residential investment contracted in six of the past seven quarters as the pandemic-era housing boom went firmly into reverse. Consumer spending, long a buttress against economic fragility, is displaying signs of fatigue as the cumulative impact of elevated prices and interest rates starts to crystallize. Retail sales have essentially flatlined over the past six months. Consumer confidence gauges have buckled, with households growing increasingly pessimistic about future economic prospects. The manufacturing sector, while no longer in outright contraction, remains on tenuous footing as well. Surveys of factory managers point to sluggish demand, excessive inventory levels, and diminishing order backlogs. Corporate earnings reports have been a mixed bag at best, with many bellwether companies trimming guidance and implementing cost-cutting measures. Perhaps most disconcerting from a financial stability perspective has been the recent turmoil in the banking industry. The spectacular collapse of Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank in early March delivered the most severe shock to the system since the global financial crisis.
While a comprehensive meltdown was averted by swift regulatory intervention, diminished credit availability from a banking sector licking its wounds could prove a significant headwind in the coming months. For the Federal Reserve, these accumulating blemishes underscore the delicate tightrope it must walk in navigating a soft landing. A policy mistake, over-tightening too much or loosening prematurely, could easily exacerbate structural vulnerabilities and precipitate the very thing it's trying to avoid, a deep, protracted recession. Few understand this precarious dynamic better than Jerome Powell himself. The Fed chair has been around the institutional ivory tower long enough to know that premature victory laps are always ill-advised when it comes to controlling inflation's insidious effects. We have seen a moderation in monthly price increases since the middle of last year, and most forecasters expect further slowing, Powell conceded in his August 25th speech. But we have further to go. I will simply say that we have more work to do. Striking the right rhetorical balance between validating market optimism and reiterating the Fed's hawkish resolve is imperative if Powell hopes to keep inflation expectations well anchored. For all of the economic progress achieved thus far, the battle is hardly won. Yet even as Powell prudently qualifies the Fed's sanguine outlook, it's clear the wider investing public has already embraced a more decisive pivot toward monetary accommodation, a stance encapsulated by Shah's characterization of the Fed shifting to a more dovish stance, focusing on stimulus rather than restraint. This interpretation stems not just from Powell's spoken affirmation of allowing the Fed funds rate to cut both ways depending on economic conditions. More substantively, it reflects the mounting evidence across financial markets of a striking easing in overall monetary and credit conditions. At their core, interest rates are simply the price of credit in an economy. And by that very metric, borrowing costs across virtually every security and instrument are markedly less punitive than they were just a few months ago. The pressures that prompted the Fed to initiate its inflation-fighting campaign in the first place have abetted considerably. The plunge in Treasury yields has already been well documented with the 10-year benchmark rate retreating from north of 4.3% to the 3.8% range. This directly translates into lower mortgage rates, with the average 30-year conventional loan now hovering around 6.3%, still elevated by historical standards but a far cry from the 7% plus levels that choked off housing demand last year. Corporate borrowers have experienced a similar easing in funding costs. After ballooning to multi-year highs amid 2022's volatility, Credit spreads across both investment grade and high yield debt have contracted sharply as investors have regained their appetite for risk. The Leverage Loan 100 Index, which tracks the market for highly leveraged, non-investment grade speculative corporate credits, has seen its yield premium over risk-free rates compress by over 100 basis points since last fall's wides. This has opened the spigots for a rejuvenated issuance of leveraged loans and high yield bonds as companies look to lock in cheaper financing. Even the beleaguered banking sector has enjoyed some respite of late. While stubbornly wide compared to historical norms, credit default swap spreads for major U.S. banks have retraced a decent chunk of their post-SVB blowout. This stabilization has helped restore confidence and funding market access for these systemic linchpins of credit creation. The tangible benefits of this broad easing in financial conditions are already manifesting in the real economy. Fiscal deficits and borrowing costs for municipal governments have been contracting in recent months, ensuring no disruption in the flow of financing for critical infrastructure, public services, and operational outlays. Low mortgage rates have spurred a modest rebound in home sales from their deeply depressed levels. Admittedly, much of the decline in Treasury yields reflects diminished growth expectations and fears of an impending economic downturn. When growth slows, so too does the term premium that investors demand to lend longer-dated capital. Fed policy is still working, albeit through a different transmission channel than intended. But that doesn't negate the stimulative effects of easier financial conditions, regardless of the drivers behind them. As the old Wall Street axiom goes, lower rates are lower rates. Their impact in terms of boosting investment, spending and hiring in an environment of elevated uncertainty cannot be overstated. For the Fed, this credit easing dynamic presents an opportune pathway for engineering a soft landing. Assuming inflation continues moderating and the erosion in economic momentum doesn't veer into something more pernicious. Ideally, the lagged effects of cumulative policy tightening will be sufficient to restore price stability without severe collateral damage. Although the process of getting inflation under control has been challenging and difficult, in part because of unanticipated shocks, the baseline outlook is for progress to continue, said Powell. 
Recent readings suggest that core inflation remains stubbornly high, but it has come down from its peak and, if current trends persist, could move significantly lower over the next year. In this scenario where inflation resumes its glide path lower without prompting an overly aggressive Fed response, the orderly decline in interest rates should provide a cushioning effect. Household wealth gets a boost from rising equity and bond portfolios. Business capital expenditure plans remain intact with funding costs range-bound. Hiring and consumer spending are supported by cheap credit. Michael Gapin, head of U.S. economics research at Bank of America, outlined this Goldilocks path. With inflation decelerating and output likely advancing at a moderate pace over the next four quarters, we expect the committee will cut rates by an additional 75 basis points in the first half of 2024 and then remain on hold until late 2025. Contained in this benign baseline projection is the presumption that the Fed will not abruptly renege on Powell's dovish pivot as conveyed at Jackson Hole. A drastic retightening of financial conditions sparked by an overreaction to any outlier data points could swiftly unhinge the fragile equilibrium settling across asset markets. After enduring 16 months of aggressive interest rate hikes and the most severe tightening of financial conditions since the early 1980s, the U.S. economy remains on tenuous footing. Returning to an overtly restrictive policy stance could nullify all the progress achieved thus far and potentially prove the spark that ignites a vicious recessionary downturn. That's not to say the Fed will be subdued in perpetuity, as Powell himself explicitly caveat at Jackson Hole. We will keep going until we are completely convinced the job is done, he affirmed, even while striking a more conditional tone regarding the magnitude and cadence of potential future hikes. The onus is on the economic data to cooperate and validate the cautious optimism taking root across global markets. Persistent upside inflation surprises or a resurgent spike in inflation expectations could force the Fed's hand, derailing hopes of a soft landing. Labor market conditions will be scrutinized incessantly for any sign of overheating that could perpetuate upward wage pressures. Corporate earnings, business sentiment surveys, and real-time consumption data will be closely monitored for spillover effects from higher rates manifesting as weaker economic activity. And of course, systemic threats from any further financial sector dislocations could upend the entire policy calculus in a heartbeat. Many seasoned investors and economists remain inherently skeptical that the Fed can thread the needle of a soft landing successfully. The annals of history are replete with examples of central banks underestimating the lagged effects of their policy actions, allowing imbalances and inflationary pressures to entrench before delivering a knockout contractionary blow. The premature loosening of financial conditions proved disastrous in the prelude to the Great Recession in 2007 to 2008. Then Fed Chair Ben Bernanke and his cohorts maintained an overly sanguine outlook despite ominous red flags rippling through mortgage and housing markets. Emboldened by quiescent core inflation metrics that overlooked destabilizing asset bubbles, they essentially disregarded the insidious risks building in the financial system. When that willful naivete finally gave way to a panicked recognition of the crisis, the Fed's subsequent response of slashing interest rates proved too little, too late. An extended and devastating recession ensued as the housing bubble burst and the U.S. economy flatlined. More recently, the central bank's misguided assessments of supply-driven inflation pressures ultimately necessitated the most draconian tightening campaign since Paul Volcker vanquished stagflation in the early 1980s. After dismissing elevated inflation prints through much of 2021 as transitory, Powell and company were caught flat-footed as price pressures morphed into a full-blown inflationary spiral. Only after squandering over a year of precious credibility did the Fed pivot to an aggressive tightening posture that ultimately saw its benchmark interest rate soar from near zero to a peak of 5.25% in under 16 months. Even more severely than in 2007 to 2008, financial conditions tightened to levels seen only once or twice a generation. So when detractors castigate Powell for proclaiming victory prematurely against inflation, they have ample historical precedent to rely upon. The costs of overcorrecting belatedly are typically more severe than those of tightening policy early and decisively as a precautionary measure. Therein lies the greatest counterargument to the notion that the Fed will deftly choreograph an immaculate disinflation this cycle. Even if price pressures slacken over the next year, the deeply ingrained institutional memory of past failures may compel Powell to err on the side of restricting economic activity for an extended period. Michael Farrelly, chief U.S. economist at J.P. Morgan Chase, expressed this view. We still think the Fed will choose a higher path for the funds rate than is currently priced into markets. They overcounted inflation as transitory, 
and are now more likely to undershoot and leave policy restrictive for some time to squeeze out the last bits of elevated inflation. Under this more hawkish scenario, the burgeoning market optimism over a soft landing would prove fleeting at best. Financial conditions may have eased modestly in recent months, but the cumulative effects of forcefully tight monetary policy will continue ricocheting through the real economy like a wrecking ball. Households would face sustained erosions in purchasing power as disposable income gets squeezed by still elevated costs of living and interest payments on mortgages, auto loans, and credit cards. Any residual pandemic-era savings buffers would be depleted more rapidly. On the corporate front, higher borrowing costs would weigh increasingly on capital investment and hiring decisions amid softening consumer demand. Credit quality could deteriorate, forcing banks to further tighten lending standards and set the stage for an adverse feedback loop of economic contraction and financial strains. Persistently tight financial conditions would batter asset prices across the board. The rebirth of the equity bull market in 2023 could be upended as earnings disappoint and valuations compress further. The resurgent year-to-date gains across fixed income markets would unwind in a disorderly sell-off reminiscent of the bond tantrum of 2022. Such a backdrop of eroding economic and financial stability would only further embolden the Fed's most hawkish contingent to prioritize wrestling inflation back to its 2% objective, even at the cost of precipitating a recession that many already view as inevitable. In this more ominous scenario, the sense of optimism currently reverberating through capital markets would reveal itself as a tragically myopic mirage. All the burgeoning talk of a Goldilocks soft landing would be rendered moot in hindsight if growth grinds to a stall and unemployment spikes in the quarters ahead. For every economic prognosticator heralding the triumph of immaculate disinflation, there are just as many, if not more, who contend that the underlying conditions for such a fortuitous outcome simply do not exist in 2023's peculiar landscape. Inflation may be decelerating, but its sprawling tentacles are proving far stickier than anticipated even just a few months ago.